Driver friends, I was late. I'm sorry. <laughs> it happens. I had the best of intentions to be here right at 3.30 and it's like 3.36, but welcome if you're joining. Welcome. You're never too late. And if you're not even here right now, you can watch this on the replay. So if that's you, hello. <laughs> oh, Yes, I, oh, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to keep up with the chat because I'd love for this to be a very chatty, chatty kind of vlog most today. I also know that there are people who wait to open their box until they get to open it with me. So hello, everyone. Tell us what you're working on, where you're from. And the first thing I'm going to do is open today's vlogmas box vlogmas box <laughs> and take a look read about the blessing and see what's going on there and then I have this thing behind me that I want to talk about as well as a couple other fun things so grab a tasty beverage I have some tea and um, my mug is a little goat little mountain goat isn't he cute <laughs> so I have some herbal tea let us know if you have anything that you are drinking welcome I'm so glad you found the channel yes oh wonderful wonderful all right welcome everyone okay keep saying hi I'm taking a peek and you know what I'm gonna turn off my um, notifications. There we go. <laughs> they won't interrupt us today. We can't be stopped. We are opening Vlogmas box number nine. So let's see what we have. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Okay. The blessing. May guard hairs never prickle you. <laughs> I like this blessing. Here it is. If it will focus, we don't know if we focus. Okay, but there it is. <laughs> I love that. And then we have a beautiful, beautiful. Oh, we have a fun bonus item today. Here is the fiber. This is a beautiful kind of a smoky taupey gray. All of the fiber is based on the fireplace. So this is our smoky color. It is a blend of BFL and silk. We've had this fiber in a couple of the other Vlogmas boxes, but those were dyed. And so now you get to see 100% what this natural color looks like. This is a natural color BFL and it's just so pretty. I think it's so pretty. So there it is. There it is. And it is like a dream to spin. It is so luxurious. It's wonderful. Um, so we also have a fun, it does match the, it does match the brick. It does definitely. So maybe that's the, the hearth, <laughs> maybe. And then we have another fun thing. So a couple days ago when we opened, and I have mine right here so I could hold it up and say, remember this? Look at how organized we are. Okay, here it is. Ha <laughs> ha. We had a tapestry needle with a sheep. And this was to go with the bonus that we have today. Which is from Katrinkles. And it's a little sheep ornament. Isn't it cute? And it has holes punched in it. So you can punched, drilled. This is wood. <laughs> it's probably drilled. You can use your tapestry needle and you can use any of the fiber that you have spun. It could be some of the one from today if you want to have a natural colored sheep. And you can make some, um, a little sheep ornament. You can take some of your hand spun yarn and stitch it on there and there's a tie that comes in the back and then you can hang it up 
and you can hang it up. If you do Christmas, you can put it on a Christmas tree. If you don't do Christmas, you can put it, you know, by your fire or wherever. Hang it in a window. Hang it on your spinning wheel. <laughs> put it wherever you want to put it. So, um, it, uh, <laughs> I wonder if you could use it as a diz. I'm not sure that it's quite, I mean, it's possible. Try it and see. Try it and see. Who knows? Maybe. All of the holes are the same size, so if one works, they all work. At least we would know that. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy that. This is one of the bigger bonus goodies in the Vlogmas box this year, but I just thought it was too cute and too fun. And then we have the little needle to go with it. So, yay. All right. I would like to also give everyone a reminder that we are doing a giveaway. There it is. So I can hold it up. <laughs> I have a little cart next to me. It's all covered in goodies to talk about. We have a giveaway for Vlogmas. It is an Eel Wheel Nano 2 from Dreaming Robots. And it's, it's made by Dreaming Robots. I purchased this for the giveaway. It's not sponsored, but it's from Jillian Eve. So if you want to win this e -wheel, man, Eel Wheel Nano 2, let's take a look at it. There it is in there. Um, it is absolutely Spin Daddy approved, Wheel Daddy approved. Yes. Yes. So the, um, the way to win is to leave a comment on this video and I want to be clear because many of you are watching this live the live comments won't count it has to be a comment on the video itself in the comments section not the live chat I have a program that runs an automatic comment picker so it's entirely random but it can't access the live chat stuff it only accesses the comments on the video so to be clear um leave a comment on any of the vlogmas videos from i think day five onward there's details about it in the video description if you would like to be entered for sorry that's loud i'm sure <laughs> there we're done okay um if you'd like to be entered for that giveaway go ahead and leave a comment um we are going to tell a story today as well. That's been our theme for Vlogmas. So don't worry. We will also have a story today, even though we're live. I'm going to retell this story. Uh, it's a famous one you've probably heard before, especially, especially if you're in Germany. <laughs> it's, it's another grim tale. So lots of fun. I know, isn't Mark fun? He'll, he'll be here from time to time. He wasn't camera ready today. And by that, I mean, he said he'd rather play video games and watch on the sidelines. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So, oh, I also wanted to share something that someone sent to me, which I was just, I was just thrilled to get this in the mail from a fiber friend. So I wanted to show it off on the channel because I think it's just the cutest thing. Here it is. Isn't that adorable? It has little sheep and it says one plus one equals two friendship. This is fiber friends. Isn't it beautiful? And purple's my favorite. So she finished it with purple. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> so fiber friend who made this and sent this to me, you know who you are. Thank you so much. It's so cute. So cute. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's, let's talk about this dress real quick. And then let's get some spinning in. How about that? This dress. I made this dress. It is the wool fork pattern. So a lot of people ask me about that. And the linen dress that I made with the same pattern, I'm actually wearing it right now. I'll try and stand up without disrupting my, yeah, it's not gonna, <laughs> I'm dragging my microphone with me. <laughs> Here we go. So this is the wool fork dress and it has these cute pockets and I made this one out of linen. Um, I can't back up much more cause I'll be stepping in the fire. <laughs> it is a real fire, so we don't want that. 
Nope, nope, nope. There we go. So it's from um, Jacqueline Seasluck. You can go to her website. I got it from the Embody book, a capsule collection to knit and sew. And it's really cool because there are a whole bunch of variations on how to construct this dress. You can do um, different sleeves or without, and you can do different lengths, dress, tunic, or shirt, crop. And so I thought, wouldn't it be fun to do this dress again? Now that I know how to do it and I have the pattern on my mind, right, fresh, I thought, oh, I could do this. And I got entirely distracted at Joann's. I talked about that in the last live, in the last video. And they had a sale on fabric and I got some fabric. So there it is, I did it in like a whole day. <laughs> it, uh, it took, yes, okay, we're gonna talk exactly about that card woven belt because I, I have a whole pile of things to show you. Yes, yes, we are on the same wavelength. Okay. Um, all right, so let's talk about the dress real quick. I'll pull this over. So I got the uh, plaid flannel. Doo -doo. Okay, hold on if motion bothers you. We're moving the camera, ready? And done, okay. <laughs> um, I got this fabric here. This is all Joanne's fabric. It's just holiday stuff and it is on sale. So if you wanna do this too, you can. Um, I was gonna say which pattern this was. This one was Simplicity something. I'm not sure where I put it. Oh dear. It is a pattern. It's one of my go-to patterns because it, it has a good range of sizes and it's what most of my t-shirts are made from, that pattern. I like that it has a little bit of a gathering at the top of the sleeve, which I think is kind of cute because you don't usually get I mean, it's jersey material, right? It's just a knit, so it's kind of floppy, but it does have that little tiny gather there, and it's cute. It's not it's not a huge thing, but I just think it's cute. And then the way that, um, I think I flipped the band inside out. Oops, there we go. So then the way that the band, it kind of has a little, I don't know, I just, for a t-shirt to have those kind of little details just kind of thrills me, so <laughs> that's what I did. And then um, the dress is the wolf work pattern and I did put pockets on it. They are functional pockets because this fabric is strong and sturdy. So I thought, why not? Um, what I need to tell you all is that this is flannel and Jersey cotton. Do you know what else is made of Jersey cotton and cotton flannel? Christmas pajamas. This is Christmas pajamas, except it's a dress. <laughs> and it's brilliant, and it's so comfortable, and I can wear it, and I can go out and about in it, and it's actually Christmas pajamas, except that it's a dress. And it has pockets. So, I mean, I think it was brilliant, and I'm so glad I did it. <laughs> it's public ready Christmas PJs, absolutely. <laughs> It's secret pajamas. It's secret pajamas. Yes, it is. <laughs> I can't tell you how comfortable this is. So I'll probably wear it in the next video. I still have to do the hem. I still have to do the hem. It's not finished yet. So I didn't wear it because this is woven. The uh, flannel is woven. And you know how <laughs> going around with an unfinished woven end, I would just be shedding. <laughs> All of the all of the weft off the bottom of the dress that would be terrible we don't need that so I'm not wearing it right now but I'm wearing the, wearing the linen one which is also incredibly comfortable so I'm gonna scoot this back over so yeah highly highly recommend <laughs> flannel pajama pants but make it a dress it was brilliant I'm so glad I did it so the um, the neckline, I didn't have the same problem that I had with the linen. And a lot of people asked me, um, I'll just a address a couple of the common questions that I had. And I also want to be really clear that I am not an expert sewist. I, I sew and I have sewn for like a whole lot of years, but I've kind of 
just done what works for me and I haven't really so so like my skill level with spinning I would consider myself an expert because I can I can spin all the ways with lots of different equipment and I can show different styles and I can do that with proficiency sewing for me is not quite the same <laughs> okay so I just want to be clear um that I can absolutely do a spinning tutorial. I can diagnose spinning issues. I can answer spinning questions and I can do that with confidence. Sewing, if I'm doing sewing projects, it's more like a come along with me as we figure this out together. It's not a do it this way and here's the expert tutorial. So I wanna be really clear about that. I don't consider myself an expert sewist. So there were a lot of people that were offering advice in the comments and I did really appreciate that. That was really helpful. I did have some very common questions. Um, the one of the common questions, because on the original that I did with the linen, the neckline stretched out a whole bunch and it was a mess and I had to do some major construction on it to fix it. I did do stay stitching. I did. It was stay stitched and it still had a problem. The linen that I used, I purposely used, that's for this dress that I'm wearing here, this linen here. Um, I purposely used a thicker, coarser linen. I didn't use like a fine linen. And I did that on purpose for a couple reasons. One, I wanted something that would be a little sturdier because for me, when I'm exploring co costumes and historical clothing and stuff, for me, I'm not, like I love looking at pretty dresses and I can totally appreciate the high fashion of whatever time period and the fanciest of the fancy stuff. I can absolutely appreciate that. But for me, my big interest is in what were people wearing day to day? Like what were the spinners wearing? And typically the spinners weren't <laughs> the wealthiest of people. Um, you know, that's not to say that the wealthiest of people in society didn't spin. Uh, oftentimes they did do uh, textile work, but it was different. It wasn't the kind of textile work that was going to be worn and used by the masses. It would be, you know, fine thread and it would be used maybe for tapestry or particular needlework or embroidery or those kinds of more specialized, more fancy and more decorative things as opposed to utilitarian things. And my interest very much is in utilitarian things, especially in the ways that I can learn from what people did in the past and apply that to my wardrobe today. That really fascinates me. Um, so I wanted to use a, <laughs> right? <laughs> I wanted to use a thicker, um, coarser linen because I wanted to wear it and I wanted to experience it. And also it's less expensive. I mean, even today it's less expensive. So that makes sense to me that it would have been something that probably, you know, more regular people would be wearing, especially if you were selling what you were producing, you would sell the good stuff and you would keep back, like someone in the comments mentioned, the cobbler wears the worst shoes, right? You would sell the good stuff and keep back um, the functional utilitarian less <laughs> stuff, less likely to catch a higher market value because if the, if you're making money, right, you want to make your money. So I think that was the main reason why it stretched out so bad. That's my theory. I did wash it. Um, I always pre-wash my fabrics. I wash it however I plan to wash the finished garment. Uh, so I did wash the linen and um, it just stretched out after it was cut. It just, <laughs> it's just what it did. So I was much more careful with this one. I did also stay stitch this one and I did a facing instead of the little bias tape binding um, and the facing and the facing is what stabilized the linen. So that was, that was good. And I did the, I did the same thing on that dress as well. And the thing I also loved about this, that I really wanted and it worked out is that I can remove the dress that has the decorative Christmas ornaments on it, the dress, the shirt, and put this with a different shirt or a cardigan or whatever. And this is a perfectly fine 
fall through winter dress that I can wear and function in my wardrobe. And then the t-shirt I might just bring out for December. So that's, that's what I'm thinking about that. Oh, sometimes the chat disappears on me. Okay. So there we go. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I, um, let's see. Oh, right, so the belt, the belt. Welcome, you made it. So the belt, here's what I'm thinking. It does, this dress does look great with a belt. Um, it's hard to, okay. <laughs> so yes, I want a belt for it. I want a belt and I need to make a belt. So, yes, good staple for the wardrobe. And, okay, I'm backing up just a second. That's one of the other things I think of when I make stuff, too, when I sew things, um, even historical things. Like, I want stuff that I can wear, not just one event, but things that I can wear a whole bunch. And I really actually enjoy dressing. I have another linen. It's more like a kirtle or like a linen underdress, medieval kind of dress that I made. I like just wearing that and spinning. I do. I feel like having the clothes while I'm doing the technique of spinning, it like completes the picture in a more holistic way for that sort of experimental archaeology thing. Even just having a dress instead of pants makes a difference. It's more difficult to park and draft when you're wearing a dress. You're going to hold, you know, if you can't let your spindle dangle between your knees because you're wearing a dress, you're going to hold it in a different position. So like even having the clothing while spinning, it makes a difference. It really does. Um, and yeah, linen is so comfortable. I love linen. It's wonderful. I like wool more. But linen's good too. <laughs> Okay, so this needs a belt, right? Now, I have something. I've played around with this a little bit, uh, but not enough. And so here is what I'm thinking for the dress. And I have a piece of fuzz that went on my nose. So I'm itching my nose, sorry. <laughs> this book is a book I have. It is called Hand Woven Tape, Understanding and Weaving Early American and Contemporary Tape. If anyone, <laughs> If anyone is familiar with shaker chairs, shaker chairs have gone in and out of fashion. If you are in the United States, if you're in the, um, you know, like the East Coast, you might have seen these a little bit more because uh, they'd be around more. <laughs> so if you know a shaker chair, I think there's a picture in here. Um, Anyway, I'm just mentioning it because it might give you an idea of, oh, that's what you're working with. So shaker chairs have a woven seat and it's woven from bands of woven <laughs> cloth. So it, it has these thick strips and it's called shaker tape, but it's, it's woven cloth. Like think of like an ankle band. It's like that, but it's called tape and then it would be woven, and then that would be the seat of the chair. Anyway, it's similar to that. So this book is a study of this early American tape, because before we had tape that had adhesive on it, the kind of tape that we use to wrap gifts, uh, this is tape. This, this is tape. So... Yes, amazing craftsmanship. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so there's a bunch of different tape looms, and you might be familiar or have seen these are tape looms for weaving tape. Now, it's a little bit different. A lot of people are very interested in card weaving. I love card weaving. I'm interested in card weaving. The blessings have little holes you can punch out and do some card weaving. Also, there are lots of different ways to weave narrow bands of tape. Um, 
because it was incredibly useful. Like imagine all the things we do with sticky tape that people couldn't have done in the past because they didn't have sticky tape. And so I have this, it's a, um, heddle, and this is called a lap heddle, a knee heddle, or a paddle heddle. This is from Robin. I asked him to put some owls on it because I love owls, and so he was like, I'll put all the owls, so now I have three owls, <laughs> and they're like, let's weave. So yeah, it's bird's eye maple. Isn't it amazing? It's absolutely amazing. I love this heddle. I love this heddle so much. So yes, if you are unfamiliar, Scotch tape is a kind of adhesive tape and it comes with a very similar plaid to this except instead of the white, it's yellow. Um, it's just a, it's just plastic tape with an adhesive on it. But in the past people had fabric tape. And we still say that, we still say bias tape, right? And so that tape, is um, sort of a callback to that. So this is what I wanna play with. I wanna play with this heddle, and this isn't like card weaving, so it's not gonna have an incredibly fancy pattern. It's not gonna have pickup like an ankle band. It's just going to have a um, bias tape. Yes, <laughs> yes. And we still have fabric tape, right? Like tape isn't new. Sticky tape is new, plastic tape is new, but tape isn't new. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, I wanna weave some tape with this heddle. And this book has some patterns in it and it has some holiday patterns. They have some in the back, including some sort of Christmassy patterns. I thought this one was really cool. Um, they wove these and put sticks of cinnamon in there. Ah, I thought that was really cool. I won't be doing that this time. And they have this one with the little bells on it. I thought that was really cool. This, uh, this book has a lot of images of surviving tools and examples of tape. It has a few patterns. It has historical and modern examples which is really cool i think it's pretty comprehensive for this kind of stuff as far as i could tell um here we go so yeah so it has all these examples of like sort of festive christmasy tape so i'm going to make one of these as a belt and it'll go with that because if i put a belt on there it's going to be um even more Christmassy if it's a Christmassy belt. And then I can just switch out the belt for something else if I want it to just be an autumn dress or something like that. So I have some Aunt Lydia's fashion crochet thread. I have white, red, and gold, sparkly. This one is 10 and these are three which I thought was a little bit like um, DMC cotton pearl thread. So I have a little bit of green that I can throw in there as an accent color. Look how that goes. Ha -ha. So this is, this is an experiment for me because I've, I've played around with that before. I think I have some tape over somewhere yonder. I've been using it to tie my flax to my distaff when I spin linen. So um, that's what I've been doing with the tape I made so far. And then there was one I didn't like because it accidentally turned out to be, it accidentally turned out to be sports team colors. <laughs> Has anyone ever done that? <laughs> You're like, oh, I like this color. I like that color. You put it together and then all you can see is the sports team that uses those colors. <laughs> and you're like, wait, that's not what I had in mind. <laughs> I, 
I thought that was funny, but I didn't like it, so I gave it away. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the belt that I made for the linen dress, so I am going to make some hand woven tape. Why am I using commercial cotton? Does anybody know? Mercerized cotton is treated with, I think it's treated with lye. It makes the cotton smoother, a little shiny, and less likely to fray. So yeah, it is easier to get the cotton. Um, it's less heartbreaking to experiment with something <laughs> like this. And I used a coupon for it. <laughs> So it's less, it's less uh, painful if it comes out terribly when I'm experimenting with different new techniques. And I didn't have time to spin all the colors that I wanted to spin. Uh, when you weave tape, whether it's for tablet weaving, inkle weaving, or um, this kind of rigid heddle weaving, it is really imperative that you have a very sturdy uh, very sturdy yarn, especially resistant to abrasion. With the heddle going back and forth, um, even if it's not one, this one doesn't move. This is one where you hold, hold on to the tape and hold it lower and the holes will keep some of the warps up. And then you want to go the other way, you lift it and then the holes will keep them down. But this one would be held in the lap. This is cut out for your, for your knees to go. Um, so the heddle itself isn't moving, but as, as you're moving stuff, it is rubbing, right? As it's going up and down and as you're, you know, advancing it and sliding it through. And then with the, with the little belt, the little shuttle going back and forth, it is, it's really abrasive on the yarn. And so if you don't get something that's really sturdy and smooth and able to take that abrasion, you will tear it up and you'll have pills before you even get finished with your band. And that's heartbreaking because <laughs> you can, I don't know if anyone's had this experience while weaving. It's terrible when you're just watching your warp fray as you weave and there's nothing you can do to stop it. It just frays and frays and frays until something snaps. And you know it's gonna snap. <laughs> it's it's terrible. Um, size, sizing, is it seizing, sizing, I think sizing. You can put stuff on it to help smooth it down and kind of um, give it a temporary coating to keep it all together until you're finished. But for tape weaving, that this was easier. And I have a week to get the belt done because I am wearing this for Christmas Eve. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay up and greet Santa in this dress. So, yeah, go to Teflon. <laughs> there's, different, there's different kinds of, like, starch recipes and, um, yeah, there's different recipes for that. So, it's fun stuff, but... Anyway, <laughs> so that's my plan for that. I think that was all the extra stuff I wanted to show you all. I think we should get spinning. So I am going to grab, oh, I need something that's not going to be too noisy while I spin. What should I grab? I'm going to grab... <laughs> May the Schwartz be with you. Um, I'm going to grab my ladybug because it's right here, except I don't see a bobbin. I might have to run and grab a bobbin. So don't go anywhere. We're about to spin. But I, I have to take off my microphone so I can go get a bobbin. I'll be right back.
and I'm back. I need to put my mic back on. Here we go. I hope that wasn't horrible and loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, I have a bobbin and I'm setting up on my light ladybug because I need it to be something that is quiet enough that we can still chat because we're going to tell a story while we spin. And let's get this. See, this bobbin does still have a leader on it. I was talking about not using a leader in a previous video because it made me feel very fancy. I still have some leaders hanging out. I, I still have a few. That's fine. They can hang on as long as they can survive. Oh, I just put this on backwards. Does everybody know this? There is a backwards way that you can put some bobbins on if you are using Scotch Tension. There is a side that has the groove that's bigger and a side that has the groove that's smaller. The smaller side is for double drive. And the bigger side is for Scotch Tension because it gives more surface area for your brake band to slow it down. And yeah. There it is. Now it's the right way. Okay, so let's do let's uh get this on wheel okay I'm gonna t I'm gonna tip the camera down so hold on hold on hold on um okay if moving stuff bothers you don't look yet I'll tell you when don't look don't look okay here we go there we go can we see the spinning wheel? There it is. There. I'm going to turn it a little more. Hang on, we're moving. Okay. Nope, it's too low. <laughs> Hang on, still moving. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. We will. There it is. I want you to see what I'm drafting. So that makes more sense. And I'll use a leader. We'll just go ahead and do that. So I think I'll just do a lovely regular spin with this one. Let me see if I got my tension right. Nope. More tension. There we go. This is lovely. So lovely. So the story I wanted to tell today kind of goes back to the whole um, what we're, you know, just regular people spinning. But I like this fairy tale because I feel like it sort of subverts some fairy tale tropes. So we're going to talk about this fairy tale. It is called, I forgot what it's called. Someone's going to have to help me out. This is a Brothers Grimm fairy tale and I'm telling it from memory. So I'll do my best, but you are welcome to fill me in in the chat if I get stuck or if I forget a detail. So... As soon as I start telling this, someone's going to be like, oh, that's this one. And they're going to tell the, um, 
name of it. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a girl who was incredibly lazy and she didn't do any of the spinning chores that she was supposed to do. And her mom was just fed up. She was furious. And one day she lost her temper and she started to beat her child, which was a fairy tale. The girl was screaming so loud that the queen was passing by in a carriage and she heard her and the queen ordered the driver to stop her carriage and she got out and went all the way up to the house and was like, what is going on that this girl is screaming? And the mother uh, was too embarrassed to tell the queen that her daughter was lazy. And so the mother told the queen that her daughter loved to spend so much she couldn't get her to stop. And um, she needed to get the flax off the wheel because they were poor and the girl just wouldn't stop spinning and the mother couldn't get the flax and, and it was just this terrible thing that the girl loved spinning so much. And the queen said, she, I have so much flax for her to spin and she can come and live in the palace and she can come and spin for me. And the mother was like, cool, take her. <laughs> Subtext was, footnote was, uh, she's your problem now. Um, I feel like this, I feel like a lot of families in, uh, fairy tales are kind of dysfunctional, but anyway, so <laughs> yes, while I'm retelling this one, you're going to get my little, my little notes on it. <laughs> so the girl went with the queen and the queen took her into the castle and took her up to the tower where there were just multiple rooms full of flax lots and lots of rooms full of flax and the queen was like spin all this and you can marry my eldest son of course the implication being that she would be you know in line to be queen because the eldest son would be king someday and um right <laughs> hasn't even met him but the girl was like i'm poor and i have no dowry and the queen said, your work ethic is your dowry. <laughs> so <laughs> she left her there. And the girl looked around and was like, if I spun from dawn to dusk every single day, I could not possibly spin all of this flax in 80 years. <laughs> like... This marriage proposal is a joke because this is just not even going to get done. And so rather than doing anything at all, the girl decided to cry about her misfortune. But remember, we were introduced to this laziness as a character trait early on. So that's what she that's what she's doing. She's just going to cry about it rather than spin anything. Apparently, she was really averse to spinning. I'm not sure if she's a fiber friend. I'm not sure if she is. But we're going to tell her story anyway, because on the third day, the queen came and looked and was like, uh, you did nothing. What's going on? Why are you just crying? You haven't even started to spin yet. And um, the girl made an excuse that she was just overwhelmed and, you know, taken from her home and all the stuff and she was just settling in and the queen was like okay but tomorrow I need to see some yarn and the girl was like okay basically thinking I've got one more day and that's it my fate is sealed because I'm lazy and I'm not even going to try lazy in in this story right being <laughs> just a fiber enemy <laughs> and so the girl hears the noise and she looks out the window and she sees these three old ladies coming up. The, I, I don't know if this girl is in the castle in the tower, but I guess there was access to some outside courtyard or something. But these three women were there. One had a giant foot and one had a giant lip. Her lip was so swollen it hung to her chin. And one had a giant thumb 
And these three women were like, why are you crying? And the girl told them what was going on. And they were like, oh, we can spin that for you. And the girl was like, seriously? You can spin all this? They were like, we can do it and we can do it quickly. But here's what we want in exchange. We want to sit at your table when you are married. We want to be invited to the wedding. We want to sit at your table and we want you to introduce us and welcome us as your aunties. And she was like, done, done, done. Let, let's get spinning, except you, not me, because, you know, I'm the fairy tale girl with the character trait of laziness. So the old ladies came in and they started spinning. The one with the large foot treadled. The one with the large lip wet the flax. And the one with the large thumb drafted. And they quickly spun the first room of, of, um, of the flax. And when the bobbin was full, the, one of the women who was drafting would uh, knock on the table. And the skeined up, finished ball of yarn would just plop onto the floor. And that's what they did. And they got through the whole room. And so the queen came back and was satisfied. She was like, oh, wow, okay, yeah, you really can spin. Because, you know, she thought it was the girl, of course. So these women went ahead and did the other rooms. And the queen was delighted. And the girl was very relieved. I'm sure she was relieved. And the wedding was scheduled. And the, um, the old woman went to the girl and said, don't forget your promise to us. You have to invite us to your wedding. Let us sit at your table. Acknowledge us as your aunties. And the girl was like, yeah, yeah, that was the deal. Cool. See you at the wedding. So the wedding comes around. And the queen, the girl says to the queen and to her you know, I guess if they're at the reception, they're probably married at that point. So I guess her husband. So she says to them, she's like, I have some friends coming and I want them to sit at my table. They're my aunts. And the queen and the prince, they were like, yeah, sure. Cool. So the old ladies come in and they were just, their uh, large foot, swollen lip and large thumb were just I guess, a spectacle to the people there. And the king was like, ew, how do you know them again? And she was like, these are my aunties, and they're sitting at our table. And so the women came in and they sat down, and the, and the I think I said king, the prince. I'm not, I don't think he was king yet. I don't know. Someone will have to help me out. <laughs> so the... um the prince, the husband, right, who just married this girl, is uh, looking at these women. He was like, how did you get such a large foot? He says to the first one. And she says, from treadling. So much treadling. And he was like, huh. And so he says to the next woman, he says, how did you get such a large lip? And she said, from wetting the flax. And he was like, hmm. And then he says to the next woman, how did you get such a large thumb? And she said, from drafting the flax, from spinning the flax. And he was like, wow, okay, great to know. So then he looks to his new wife and he says, I never ever want you to have a large foot, a fat lip, or a large thumb. So I'm banning you from spinning ever again because I want you to stay beautiful. <laughs> so that's how the girl was saved from the the terrible chore of spinning the flax. The end. <laughs> this is an actual fairy tale story. Okay, so <laughs> right, like, okay, yeah. I mean, it's a fairy tale. Every fairy tale is gonna be problematic. They just are. But I find it a really interesting fairy tale because I feel like it subverts a whole bunch of tropes that we see in fairy tales. 
Because so often in fairy tales, there's some kind of a deal made with some sort of fantastical creature, right? It turns out to be an enchantress or elves or some kind of fae creature or something, right? And then people forget that they had a deal, like the Rumpelstiltskin thing, where she kind of tries to go back on the deal that she made with him. This girl didn't. She remembered the deal that she made, and she was like, yep, these are my aunties, and they're sitting at the table with us. Um, and I thought that was kind of cool. Like, they, they're telling us that she's this terrible person because she's lazy, but compared to a lot of other fairy tales, she remembered her promise and kept her word. And I thought that was really cool. Um, and it also shows that, like, <laughs> not everybody loved spinning. There are some fairy tales where people did love spinning, but there's a lot of them where it's like this endless chore that's never finished. And for this girl to have a life of luxury and wealth and not have to spend for her whole life, like, <laughs> her laziness was rewarded. <laughs> and I think that's just kind of funny. So, I like that fairy tale for those reasons. But also the, um, the whole thing about these women having these deformities because of the amount of spinning that they, they did, um... There's a there's a video of Norman Kennedy. Norman Kennedy is a master spinner. Interweave did a video with him. I think it, I think it's called from from flax to linen, I believe. And he talks about old songs in. <laughs> I'm reading the chat. Yeah. Um, so he talks about some of the old songs that um, say, don't bother looking for a beautiful wife because she's going to have a swollen lip just like all the rest. And the, the whole thing of that was that women, especially when it was wintertime and they're inside and they're spinning flax, flax is dusty. And it, it, particularly if they're spinning with a spindle, and they're wetting the, the thread as they spin it. They're wetting it by either repeatedly licking their thumb for the drafting. And some people would just run the flax thread through their mouth as they were spinning it. There's even, I think there's even some artwork of that showing that. And so you've got this like splintery, slivery, dusty, tough. Like, have you ever tried to snap flax with your hands? It'll dig into your hands before it, um, before it actually snaps. So yeah, and you're by a fire and it's dry and it's cold and you're constantly, you know, licking your thumb. Yeah, I can imagine these poor people would have absolutely swollen chapped lips. Like that's probably real. <laughs> so I, I wanted to tell that story because I think it's really interesting. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that one. It does, yes, the fiber I'm spinning, it kind of matches in um, with the, with the, with the linen dress I'm wearing. Yeah, a little bleak. <laughs> but I'm just glad that those, those women who showed up and did all that work, that their end of the deal was held up. That's the part I love about that, that story. So, all right, let's do a little bit of Q and A. Um, I'm done chatting. <laughs> my telling my story. I'm not done chatting. I'm done telling my story. So yeah, let's do a little bit of Q and A before I head out. And also, just as a reminder, I do have um, my shop restocked. I have the ring distaffs are back in stock, and the spinner's control cards are back in stock. So we've got just about a week if you need any last-minute nudge, nudge, get me a stocking stuffer <laughs> for, for anybody who might be getting you stocking stuffers. Those are in the shop if you want to check those out. The three spinners. That is the name of the tale. Thank you. 
Yes, that was it. That was it. You can look it up. I think I got all the major story beats. I think I got all the important details, but of course it is a Brothers Grimm story, so you can look up the actual, you know, but part of the fun of those old tales is that they are retold. So... Okay, some questions, questions, questions. Yes, curious to know if you've ever experiment with spinning oil. Yes, yes. Um, I've used, okay, lots of questions coming up. <laughs> lots of questions coming up. Yes, it's fun, okay. Oh, <laughs> these are distracting. <laughs> I'll do my best. Let's get to them. All right. So spinning oil is a question I have. I have used just regular um, like baby oil. I put it on some Shetland that I was spinning after I scoured the Shetland and it drafted much, much thinner and smoother and easier. It was lovely, 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 lovely. That story is at the Mudder Museum. Which story? The one I told her is, is that reference to someone else's story? Um, okay, so the question, how would you spin quiviate? Uh, quiviate is a very short, stapled fiber. So I would spin it with a high twist, high, high, high twist. If you have a supported spindle, that would be fantastic. The, the one I told, oh, cool, cool, good to know. Um, a supported spindle is great or something with double drive or at the very least the highest twist you can manage. So whether that's using the smallest whorl that you have or treadling as fast as you can. Short fibers love a high twist. Um, and then I'm getting questions about my walking wheel. Yes, I do have a walking wheel. It needs some refurbishment because when I got it, it did not have the spindle attachment but it does have the wheel it has a tension system it has the support for the spindle and it has the corn husks that held the spindle before that piece was lost it still has the corn husks tied around um, the maiden so yeah it is getting restored I'm getting that piece made for it in the works. Taking a little sip of tea. You can spritz the oil and the wool. Yep. Just like that. Okay, friends. Well, I We've been here for about an hour. I am going to say goodbye for now. We will have an update on how this turned out in our next video. So, oh, so I will see you all then. And maybe I will, here, I'm going to bring this up to my face. Hang on. Here we go. We move. Ah! <laughs> It just wants to turn. Okay, I'm gonna hold it. Oh dear. <laughs> My whole camera was like, whoa. All right, so it was wonderful hanging out. Ah! <laughs> and spinning with all of you. My equipment's giving up. I will see you all in the next one. <laughs> Happy spinning. No, <laughs> there it goes.